Welcome to Club Soda's Mindful Drinking Festival. We're online, global, and as always, absolutely free. Hi, I'm Drew, and I'm one of the co-founders of Club Soda. And I'm Laura, the other co-founder of Club Soda. We help you change your drinking in ways that help you live well. So whether you're looking to cut down, stop for a bit or quit, you can find what you need from podcasts and books and courses on joinclubsoda.com. This festival, we've brought you an amazing lineup from over 100 people from across the world. And our programme this time really is global. Every day starts Down Under with me, Sarah. As well as organising the festival in Australia, I spend my time looking for alcohol-free alternatives and tips for people who choose not to drink, but who still want to live a social, fun and adventurous life. And I'll be wrapping up each day here in the States. I'm Amanda, your US festival host and coordinator. And I'm also a mindset coach who helps women change their relationship with alcohol so that they can start living their most authentic life. Each day with a rolling program of inspirational panels, conversations, social events, and opportunities to discover new low and low alcohol drinks. So whether you want inspiration to change your drinking or to connect with other people, or you want to discover and enjoy a new low and no alcohol drink. The Mindful Drinking Festival is for you. Cheers. 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 Hello, hello, hello. Uh, welcome to Mindful Drinking Festival. Uh, my name is Charlotte. Uh, I'm with Liars Spirit Company. I'm one of their brand ambassadors. Liars is a range of non-alcoholic spirits, liqueurs, and aperitifs, meaning that whatever the occasion, whatever the weather, you can make your drink your way. I am joined here today with Aaron Smolin, or director of Let's Push Things Forward. Aaron, would you like to introduce yourself and what you do? Hi there, um, as Charlotte said, my name is Aaron. I'm the founder of Let's Push Things Forward, uh, which is a project aimed at improving the skill set and the mindset of hospitality, as well as putting a little bit of positivity back in the industry. We love a bit of positivity, especially within the bar industry. Um, what sort of what sort of events do you have coming up, Aaron? I know we were chatting earlier about some. Yeah, so we just had a meeting yesterday about um, doing a uh, an event called the Twisted Classic. So it's going to be a cocktail competition with a difference. And we're a big um, sort of fan of when we come up with these projects, it's the um, yeah and rule instead of the no but rule. So we keep just building on them. And we've ended up with a challenge which is going to be a uh, 10K with a difference. Wow. So to start with, it's not going to be 10K. Uh, it's going to be 40 kilometers. And wow. we're going to do the 10 peaks of the Lake District. Uh, we're going to do it in 10 hours. We're going to take 10 bartenders and make a non-alcoholic cocktail at the top of each peak. And it's actually sponsored by Liars Co. So it's a, a non-alcoholic um, cocktail comp, but with a difference. Amazing. Some really good work you'll be doing. And a lot of a lot of kilometres as well. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was one of those ones where you just you come up with the idea and sort of go, you know, this is going to be hard, don't you? I was like, nah, it'll be fine. We'll, we'll get it done, man. We'll get it done. Brush it over. Big eyes. Big dreams. Yeah. So today we will be doing a bit of a mix up. I'm going to be making some cocktails on my lovely table behind me, um, a few non-alcoholic cocktails with liars, um, showing you what fantastic things you can make at home, uh, whether you're still doing lockdown or going out. And then we'll be chatting to we'll be chatting together about Aaron's experiences of exploring sobriety during lockdown. Um, I don't know about you, but it's boiling where I am. So I genuinely just really want to drink. I'm going to pop back and start making my first drink, if you don't mind. Cool. So hello, welcome to my little home bar. The first drink that I'm going to be making for you today is uh, an Amalfi Spritz. It's essentially our take on an Aperol Spritz. Um, this is the latest addition to the lovely Liars family. It is our Italian Spritz. Um, you can see by the color, um, and when you smell it, you can see that it is modeled perfectly after uh, the most beautiful um, aperitif Aperol. Um, I'm going to be talking about them in mills, but also about parts as well. I understand that a lot of people might not have measures and exact equipment at home. So it's always easy just to do it in parts and just essentially see how you do. So I'm going to start with a wine glass here and I'm going to start with my measurements. I'm going to go for 50 mils of the Italian spritz or two parts. Just going to pour it straight in there. What I really love about this um, lace edition, I'm so happy that we have it, is one that it is now perfect weather for it, but also that 
it is so remarkably like that fantastic aperitif drink. Um, it's got that bitterness, it's got that um, kind of herbal rhubarb notes, um, and it's got that kind of almost syrupy thickness to it, which works exceptionally well when we pop a bit of fizz in it. Um, I'm gonna do the same amount, I'm gonna do 50 mils or two parts again of fizz. I'm going to be using a non-alcoholic fizz, um, but the great thing about this, and I'm also gonna measure it because I'm a little bit anal about these things, but, yeah. The great thing about Lyres is that you can exactly do your own thing. You can mix and match. If you want to be using one of your favorite Proseccos, then please do. The idea is to be able to make it no and also low from wherever you want to drink. And then finally, really, really simple, is we're going to pop in one measure, a low, one measure, 25 ml of soda water. And I think that's a really great ratio to do for all little spritzes, a two to one ratio. You can also go for a three to one if you're feeling like you want to go a bit stronger on the fantastic spritz. And then I'm just gonna grab some of my ice, my rather melted ice now. <laughs> is it as hot with you, Aaron, as it is with me? It is absolutely boiling, and my uh, my room is on the third floor of my uh, of my house, so it's, uh, it's sweltering today. I think you're having a great time too. Well, I've got the doors open here, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing that I've got all of the heat coming in. I'm just going to pop in a lovely little, go on in, my darling, little orange wheel, and that is it. That is a perfect little Italian spritz. Cheers! I'm going to come oh. back down and join you. Um, I hope you don't mind. I'm gonna go ahead and drink. Ah, brilliant! Yes. What if, what are you drinking, my darling? So I am drinking a lengthened breakfast martini. So using the London Dry, uh, triple sec, a little bit of lemon and uh, a little bit of marmalade. So shaken That's and then fantastic. topped with a, a lemon tonic. So. Cheers to you. Um, well, I'm having a great time here. This is delicious, and I think. Sorry, I can't share it with you all. Um, but I do think that um, uh, this sort of weather, this sort of drinking really does lend itself to um, low and no drinking or even alcohol free. Um, I think aperitifs, they work so well with uh, no and low. Um, but what about you? What have you been drinking at the moment? How have you found not drinking? Um, so, I have basically just reaffirmed what my um, my approach to alcohol um, is. And I did a, a hundred days um, alcohol free over over lockdown, and it's really just changed my life for the better. And um, it's just been really cool actually going around and seeing what people's uh, non alcohol options are. I think the industry is changing massively in terms of being able to uh, for like for example people's non alcohol options, especially on cocktail menus, to actually people to care about them and a bit of thought process uh, to go um, to be put into these drinks. And I know previously in the past, uh, there's been a lot of like jungle juice and just, it's obviously, it's, it's been seen as an afterthought on a menu. And it's Wait, good to see that explaining this is jungle juice? <laughs> jungle second. juice is basically with a blindfold where you pick up any juice that's in your um, that's in your station and you just mix it into a glass and then you charge someone four pound 50 for it and call it a cocktail. Which so, we don't like. Yeah, exactly. So it's good to see that people are um, becoming more mindful and um, and actually making it easy for people to be considerate about what they're um, what they're putting in their body. Really cool. One hundred percent. Yeah, and I, th I think it's the idea that we're moving away from the idea of something um, sweet and sugary and lots of juices um, away from that term mocktail, right? Yeah, I was. I didn't like. Never liked the word mocktail. It's always. It, insinuation that you're going to take the piss out of someone for ordering it as well um so yeah it's not really something that's always resonated with us but i agree 100 what you're saying about the, the the sugary aspect of it like i did dry january last year um and i felt worse on the days after just because oh. of, uh, of going around and just drinking like you don't want to go and order a water in a bar um you just want to be contributing but i was drinking red bull and juice and coke and that sort of thing the sugar cracked the next day was horrible it was worse than a hangover anyway so you go up, you go down, you can't get a real good balance. Yeah. The idea of mindful drinking is here to stay most definitely. Um, and I, I, I don't know about you, but um, using sort of bitter flavours is a really refreshing approach to yeah. uh, 
to not drinking to not drinking and, and drinking low as well um it um the bitterness kind of uh, makes you almost forget a little that uh, you are drinking something soft and without alcohol um, yeah. well, well that's one of the, the great things about liars is obviously you can have two people going into a bar one of them might might not be drinking for whatever reason um pregnancy just they're, they're off the source religion whatever the, the reason might be um, they can then ask someone what their their friend what they're drinking, and then saying, "Well, when you to order the same one, we can take the alcohol out of it, and it still has the body, it still has the substance, and it still has that soul of the drink." So it's very easy for people to make that decision. Uh, and I think that's one of the key things, especially in the current climate, is making it easy to get food and drink on the table for people. Um, is going to be a, a big key factor in the future of hospitality. So that's it. Get the orders in. Get the drinks out. And I think you're, that's exactly right. I mean, you know, we both bartenders um, but by trade. We, we know and love alcohol. Um, it's, it's what we know how to do. Um, but it is that idea that um, not being specifically so, um, what am I trying to say, um, against it as a, as, a, as a purpose, right? We use, yeah. we, go ahead. So um, it's, the way that I likened it, it was uh, actually Ben Cohen, who was a rugby player, said it. And he said that playing rugby is a bit like drinking. It's like having chocolate. And it's a great thing. If you have it every day, every available opportunity, you just grow sick of it. There's no pleasure in it whatsoever anymore. Um, and that really resonated with me because my drinking habits beforehand were were not pretty at all. They were actually disgusting, to be, to be brutally honest with you. Um, and yeah, it's about people having that mindset of thinking about what they're putting in the body and the long-term effect that it's going to have on them as well. Were you, um, I know you said you, you tried dry January last year. Were you yeah. sober curious um, coming into lockdown or what had been your experience of it? I was sober curious um, for a while, but I never really got round to it, which sounds really daft. Uh, I actually had my hand sort of forced at the start of lockdown. Um, me and my girlfriend broke up on day one. I was like, right, Brutal. this is, yeah, this, this is going to go one of two ways. And um, every bar in the in the country was obviously closed, and, and we believe in like you make habits easy. So I took that as a sign that you know what I mean. Like even though I wasn't working, I wouldn't be able to just go and sit in a bar and drink out of boredom. And you know I had all these like self help development books that I never bothered to read, and it was just cool to be able to go. Do you know what? Take this a day at a time and see how far you go. Um, I was only actually aiming to do 30 days to start with, but I started feeling so good after it that I just kept going with it and it was, yeah, it had a massive impact on me. That's amazing. Um, where did you get support? Was it those self-help books? Was it friends, family? Um, it was just, it was a mix of everything. Uh, one of my main um, supports has been Paddy Howley at So Let's Talk, which we've um, we've worked with before. Um, and Paddy's got a very similar story to mine um, in terms of had some unhealthy relationships with alcohol and Got to the point where we just like we actually don't know where to turn and we obviously we we lean on alcohol as a crutch um for many reasons um you know boredom stress anxiety whatever it might be uh and he turned around and a little bit further ahead of me in terms of self-development but it was just great to um to have that sort of support there and to bounce off and it was just very very um proactive uh, experience in the way that you ask yourself questions that you never really asked before, uh, which is massive in, in hospitality. So the best example I can use is, well, not just hospitality, but how many people go, I slept terribly last night and they go, oh, that's nice. And then they talk about something else. Well, yeah, that's very sure. few people. Yeah, exactly. Very, very few people go, well, why did you sleep badly? And it's the same, similar sort of thing with alcohol. So people go, are you reaching for a drink very, uh, very, very regularly? It's like, well, why is that? Is it because it's just easily available to you? Is it because you're dependent on it? What are the reasons behind this? And I'm not saying that you have to stop, but maybe that you look at it and you go, well, actually, um, this is something that you can definitely address, and this is something that you could make, um, you could improve the environment around you and make, uh, make better. That's amazing. And lockdown was the perfect, if you're putting it off, time to do so, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because you, especially when you when you work in the industry, it's very, very easy for people to buy you shots. You have half-time shots with your, with your bartenders. You sit and have a drink after work, especially a sort of stressful shift. Um, you're trying to get the shift off you. We've all been there. Um, at home, we just basically, uh, I moved all the alcohol out of my room. Amazing. Bought anything that was, that was easily drinkable just down the sink. Uh, and it was actually that the trigger was when my girlfriend at the time broke up with us, I went straight to the fridge, it was 10 o'clock in the morning, and I went straight to the fridge to open a can of cider, 
and that smell hit me and i just went whoa like, what the f are you doing um everything down i was just like that was the sort of straw that broke the camel's back um and yeah then i created an environment that it was it was difficult to for me to to uh, lean on alcohol and uh, it really really helped that is incredibly strong of you um also i have to say thank you for speaking with such like refreshing refreshing open about all of this well that's one of the, the parts of my project is um to well I, along with so let's talk is the 86 the silence on um on certain aspects and i ended up just by fluke getting nominated for the 25 um day push-up challenge oh, i yes, started recording I myself yeah i started recording myself um doing push-ups i just thought well this is not actually beneficial it's also boring no one needs to see me doing push-ups um so instead i started sharing the advice just in little like 90 second videos about what was helping me and what got us through lockdown. Um, and one of the points was I talked about money a little bit. And, I was, and no one talks about the financial um, aspect of mindful drinking. I wasn't doing that to give people financial advice. I was saying it to, that people would actually address the elephant in the room. If you bury your head in the sand and you think the situation is going to get any better, you are sorely mistaken. So it's um, if I can help people by just being honest and open, then I will do it. I um, I absolutely love every. I remember seeing all of them, um, the friends on Facebook, seeing all of them, and I'm greatly inspired by them, and you're right. It, a lot of things were food for thought, all the things you're bringing up. Um, I'm going to start making another drink, but I also remember you saying to me that uh, at the beginning of lockdown, you might have uh, gone, into, uh, gone into the bar that you were working at and picked up some supplies. Is that correct? Um, uh, picked up some, uh, some non-alcoholic goodies. To play with. Uh, basically the entire liars co range yeah that was um the thing is was, uh, at your disposal <laughs> yeah exactly um it was just cool to to be able to see the uh, the options out there and like i said about being able to directly sub um in and out of drinks means that you can write a, a banging cocktail menu and you don't have to put too much thought into offering non-alc options so the places that i used to work for they don't actually have non-alc menus they just have a um, symbol next to their, um, their standard drinks, with the option to sub the alcohol in and out. So, yeah, it's been a pleasure to um, to be able to, to play around with these. And, again, it was quite a cool thing that I got nominated for a couple of the mixo challenges during um, during lockdown. Uh -huh. I basically explained to the people that nominated us, like, I'm not going to do this because I know that I will use that as an excuse, thinking, like, oh, I'm putting a twist on this, and suddenly I've got four, five, six versions of a drink in front of me. I'm not going to throw them away. I'm going to end up drinking um, yeah. them. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't put myself in that environment to uh, to make it easy to drink. I think that's a very smart smart way of doing it. One hundred percent. And um, you're exactly right. I mean, um, the, why one of the reasons why I love working with Lies is that they're so easy to sub in and out. Um, and that's exactly what I'm doing with the cocktail I'm about to make now. It's um, one of my favorites, although I guess I say that about every drink. Um, but it's really hard to choose your favorites, right? It's like favorite children. Um, this is a clover club that I'm going to be making for you. Um, it's an incredibly old, um, really lovely traditional cocktail, and it's based around the idea of a sour. So you have your base spirit or non-alcoholic spirit, you have your acid, in this case we're doing lemon juice. I've already put the lemon juice in because um, I wanted to do it slyly, it often just spurts up in my face whilst I try it. <laughs> it's, <out. laughs> it's always the case. And um, raspberry syrup or a sweetener, a, a, a nice little... Um, sweeter to balance it out um the traditional ratio at least one that i love going off of is two parts one part one part and so i've simply started with 25 mils of freshly squeezed lemon juice and like i said i've already done it because it does have a tendency to go up in my face um unfortunately i couldn't come across any uh raspberry syrup so we're going to kind of improvise i've got my here a little bit of um simple syrup which is incredibly easy to make at home if you're doing any home cocktails really recommend making this it's just one part um white sugar to one part water stir it down until it's dissolved and then you have it ready to go and it can be used in a number of cocktails so we're going to add like i said one part or 25 ml in of that and then we're going to go on to um, our, our spirit, our lovely liquid, our gin equivalent. This is Liar's uh, Dry London Spirit. Um, and I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's um, our gin replacement. It has the incredible juniper or coriander spicy body that you're looking for from um, a, a London dry gin. Um, and then fantastic uh, 
white jasmine notes on the nose, just coupled with a bit of um, pink grapefruit zest as well. I think it's really beautiful and complex. I'm gonna pop in two parts, or 50 mils, into my tin. And then here comes the fun part, because I haven't got any ras uh, raspberry syrup, I'm gonna pop in whole raspberries, and it's gonna mush up, and because uh, it's only as raspberries you make it, I put in practically half a punnet here. Um, and then just a little twist. So uh, Clover Club is fantastic because it's lovely and frothy, and this comes from egg white. Uh, now I'm a bit apprehensive of doing it in front of all you people, um, but I'm sure we're gonna make it work really, really well, and it's not gonna go horribly wrong as I speak. So I'm just gonna crack it in. I, feel I was like gonna say, this, a, this is brave. <laughs> Don't, I feel like there should be a drum roll or something going on. Luckily I've done this, oh God, a lot. Hey, you see that? It did work. You um, nailed that. I am very Thank impressed. you so much. Thank you. Um, if you are vegetarian, sorry, if you're vegan, then you can use aquafaba, so that's chickpea water. Um, or you can get little foaming bitters, which do the job incredibly well. I'm going to seal that up. I'm really lucky to have a set of tins, but if you have like a protein shaker, if you have a jam jar, then you can do it really easily at home. I'm just gonna give it a quick dry shake as they call, just to aerate everything up. And I'm really hoping it doesn't split on me. I always used to say the reason I wear glasses behind the bar is because a lot of cocktails sometimes would just man magically open themselves up onto me. I'm just gonna grab some ice and pop all this in. Do you want to just maybe point out, Charlotte, why you're, you're dry shaking it and then um, and then using the ice afterwards? Uh, yes, I, so I'm dry shaking it just to give a little bit of aeration beforehand, just to whip everything up. If you think about it, it's a bit like uh, using a whisk, but obviously without a whisk. And now I'm putting ice in just to make sure it's obviously chilled and well diluted and really beautifully melded together. Yeah. I'm going to go for it. So I can feel this is really nice and cold in my hands. Pop this down here. And then just off to my side, I have a lovely little coop. I'm very blessed. This is the only one left in the house because we seem to keep breaking them. Too many non-alcoholic cocktail parties in the house. Um, I've had that in the freezer for a bit. That's one of my little top tips is chuck things in the freezer, all your glassware in the freezer if you have space. Just because it keeps your drink lovely and chilled whilst you're drinking it. Beautiful, is it? And also I love to pop the bottles in the fridge as well. I, I have to say, having them out just for five minutes in this heat is enough to warm them up. Yeah. But it does make all the difference when you're making lovely cocktails at home. Really, and just to finish that off, I've got raspberry pop on the side. And I'm gonna come back around and cheers you with it. <laughs> Excellent. So here we have uh, a really fantastic yes, Liars Clover Club. And cheers to you. Cheers to you, Aaron. Cheers to everybody at home. Everything you dreamed it would be. Yes, it is. Um, it's really lovely. It's really lovely and balanced. Um, I think it's just fantastic. And of course, the um, egg white in it makes it lovely and fluffy. Brings such an amazing texture to it. Um, and I think that's honestly a very really perfect example of how to just, how easy, easy, easy it is to switch in and out of um, liars and the traditional spirit you use. I'm gonna pop this down, otherwise I'm gonna keep drinking it. Well, sweet. <laughs> well, no, it's just too easy, especially if it's there. And also, it's just heavenly, it's beautifully and, and raspberry, yes. Um, I know we, we've talked about, um, uh, and you've done some fantastic twists on classic cocktails with liars, and just wondering what, what sort of advice you have for making cocktails at home? So don't be afraid to make mistakes. Um, I think that some, particularly in the past, people have been a little bit afraid. Um, but for me, it's the same as cooking. So you learn by doing. Um, if you are struggling to match uh, flavor profiles, literally just Google it. Um, it's really easy. So if you say, okay, so I'm gonna, I wanna use almond flavor, uh, what's, Sort of um, what flavors go with that? I used to do it on many developments. Google it. Go actually almond and rose go together. So it's really easy to then make something like a twisted mai tai, um, especially using the dark cane spirit. 
works um, works really really nicely. Um, just try to think about what your what your target is as well, um, and don't be afraid to um, maybe batch prep and scale things up that sort of stuff. So if you're finding it quite tricky and um, you know you're producing short cocktails a little bit like your espresso martinis that sort of stuff, um, don't be afraid to to batch these things together um and the, the sort of ease of service because while it's all well and good and it's fun your kitchen is generally not designed to be a bar so very quickly <laughs> yeah you make one drink and suddenly it looks like a, a tornado has gone through the place so um yeah try and keep it simple um be experimentative as well um and we always say to people about the things like speed of service is if you get cocktails and they've got like eight nine ten ingredients the chances are there's some of those that you're not going to be able to taste so Again, keep it, um, you know, three, four ingredients and keep it balanced as well. Obviously, think about your flavor profile. But if you have um, a, say you're aiming for something and you just use sugar syrup and you don't use any sour, so you don't use any lemon, lime juice, that sort of thing, just bear in mind that it's going to be very, very sweet at the end of it. So, for example, if you drink gin and tonics, um, there's no point in uh, then trying to make a daiquiri, um, but then not putting any lime juice in it, that sort of thing. So. Of course, of course. So daiquiri, um, for those of you who don't know, is very similar to, oh, I say very similar to the drink I've just made, in concept it is. It's your base spirit, you can have your uh, rum or your alcohol free rum, um, lime juice and then sugar, two, one, one again. Really, really super simple and also delicious to make at home. But you're right, it needs all those parts, almost like a little triangle of balance going on, yeah. right? Everything's yeah, exactly. together. Um, I, I also totally agree with you. I don't want to show you what my kitchen looks like uh, trying to prep everything. And that's why I have this beautiful area here. Um, but um, where do you kind of get your um, uh, inspiration when you're putting bar menus together? I know you said about flavors and everything, but uh, are there classics that you just can't help but twist on? Uh, yeah, so I was actually one of the first um, alchemist bartenders to be classically trained. So it's always have a, um, um, always had a, a sort of, Base in my heart. Um, I tend to split it into your your top sellers and then your sort of go-to like unusual flavors and then you've got your sort of bartender drinks at the end. So you've got to bear in mind that with a menu, um, however big it is, the, you have to have drinks that appeal to different flavor profiles and you have to have drinks that um, appeal to different people as well. So for me, if you've got your sort of like your top sellers, you know, your porn star martinis, your espresso martinis, that sort of stuff, like they've always got a place on the menu. Um, mm. But then sort of things like your twists on uh, Negronis and your sort of um, Bucarets and, you know, your sort of more bartender specific drinks. Just think about who's going to come in and who's going to be ordering um, these drinks. Or who's going to be drinking them at home. Yeah, exactly. So, for example, if you're going with your bartender friendly drinks, then generally, they need to be balanced or to be on the sour side. Generally, if you're going with your sort of your people pleasers, they tend to be on the sort of sweet, uh, fruity, um, normally a little bit longer sort of side. And also as well, the things like the, the Instagram ability as well is um, is huge. And it's something that we don't like, particularly in the industry, but it's just something that you have to do. Um, if you put a cocktail down in front of someone and it looked awful, they're probably going to take a photograph of it and they're probably going to share it with the world. So um, we just wrote a little guide to guest satisfaction. And one of the points in it was don't serve shit to guests because they will not like it. That's very true. You want to make them look as beautiful as possible. I mean, after all, we do like eat with our eyes as well as with uh, with our taste buds, of course, yeah. which is also why I, you know, I'm, um, I love that you can make uh, drinks at home really, really easily. All you need is just a bit of here and there for fresh garnish. For example, my orange that I use and a bit of raspberries that I was already using. Um, but then it's just taking the care to um, pop that raspberry on top of the drink or cut it. And, and maybe you want to do some sort of fun as well with um with like bitters on top just make it a bit more um pleasing to you because at the end of the day it, it, you're making this for yourself you want to make something that you're going to enjoy and you're going to really really um be proud of making as well although i yeah, have to say one thing one thing that i always love to suggest to people when we're doing uh, master classes is that no matter what always have fun with what you're making um yeah. otherwise you're not gonna have fun drinking you're gonna get a bit grumpy and everything it's like um it's like uh, it's like backseat driving. If you've ever been, you're not going to have a good time if, if somebody's nagging you. If you've got that nagging voice in your head, you want to be able to relax, go into it, and enjoy the end product because you're often sharing with friends, right? Yeah, massively. 
I think that's um, is huge when we talk about mindful drinking is we go to bars, restaurants, pubs, whatever, and it seems to focus around alcohol uh, because obviously alcohol being a social lubricant. Um, now it's been just pleasant and such a massive shift for it to actually um, like a paradigm shift towards the actual social bit of it. So I will go out. I was in Newcastle at the weekend um, mm -hmm. and obviously Newcastle is a party city. I had one half pint of cider as I was overlooking the beach and I was just like, you know what, this is the first pint of cider I've had in four months. Um, I think this is a fitting environment in which to have it. And then I went back to drinking non out um, not to because I could uh, continue to catch up with my friends. And then the next day, once again, I was up at uh, half seven in the morning. Um, it's mad that as well. People say, like, when you stop drinking, it turns out you can get up earlier and you have more hours in the day. So a lot of Crazy. people are like, I wish you had more hours in the day. It's like, you slept till midday because you were hungover. So maybe think about what you're doing the night before, and then you'll have a more productive day afterwards. So yeah, it's been um, it's been really really cool um, to sort of shift that mindset on it. Amazing. I'm going to make the last drink of the session. Um, as we are over halfway, we're coming towards the end. Please, guys, if you have any questions or comments or would like us to to talk about anything, please do pop them in like the comment section, and I can see them all here and. I'll read them out and um, and we can answer them then. And obviously everything remains anonymous, so do not worry if you think it's a stupid question. There is literally no stupid questions in this game. So my final drink of the session, um, I was gonna say yet again, it's one of my favorites, but I think it's absolutely delicious. Um, it's called Boulevardier. Not many people might have heard of it. It's um, a fantastic twist on the classic Negroni. Uh, Negroni, for anybody who doesn't know, is an um, Italian drink with three parts, equal parts of gin, Campari, and sweet vermouth. We're just going to be swapping out that gin or our gin um, replacement for a bourbon. Um, so the star of this drink is going to be something very close to my heart, um, our American malt. Um, I'm at, I, I, I'd say I bloody love this one. Um, I hope you don't mind me swearing, but I absolutely bloody love this one. Actually, I'm going to pour in a bit more than I should do for it, just because I, I love this so much. Um, I think, and I don't know about you, Aaron, I always find that um, darker spirits come under more scrutiny than lighter or other flavors. And I think that having something which is dark, which is so toasty, um, oaky, um, and classically bourbon-esque um, is a boon for having on your back, but I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, massively. So uh, my background is I opened Smuggler's Cove in Liverpool, mm -hmm. which has got the world record for the biggest rum collection commercially available. Um, and then I was bar manager of the Birmingham Whiskey Club. Um, and we had uh, in the top 10 biggest whiskey collections, um, I think in the UK, actually, it was pretty, yeah, it was pretty mega. And um, I think with aged and darker spirits, it's um, it's a little bit more of a craft. Not I'm saying that, that like gin and stuff um, isn't a craft, but with lighter spirits, you tend to get exactly what you put into it, especially like the flavoured gin profile. I think gin or strawberry gin tastes massively of strawberries. Mm. You're talking about aging stuff in a barrel. Um, for me, it's got a little bit more of a soul to it. Um, and it's a little bit more tricky, and obviously, it's it's good things come to those who wait, um, especially in terms of your, um, you know, some of your age statement whiskies that are going eight, ten, twelve, twelve years plus. So, yeah, I've always preferred aged spirits. One hundred percent, and I think that's when you start getting the more mature flavours coming out of mm. uh, alcohol-free drinks as well. I think that's when you know you're getting something which is moving firmly away from um, a bit more grown up let's say, definitely more grown up. So in here, I have popped in equal parts of um, our aperitif rosso. So this is our sweet vermouth replacement. We've got Italian orange, which I'm sure you can see from the color. I don't know if you can see it from here, but it's bright red. Um, it is clearly um, and, and lovingly um, an ode to Campari, the fantastic um, red bitter. And then of course, our American malt. Um, I'm going to pop some ice in here and give it a really, really quick stir. The the thing about with non-alcoholic drinks is that we don't need to stir down to remove any of the alcohol then. So I'm just going to stir it down really, really quickly to get that chill to it, to get that really lovely, silky, icy texture going on. So I know we talk about, and also I'm using ice just with my hands because I'm not here to impress anybody. So please don't judge me, anybody watching at home. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know, I know there's many buttons out there will be, be judging me. Um, but that is something that I, that I always really love to say about lies is that 
we love these um the the usual spirits so much the 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 classic spirits the classic liqueurs aperitif so much that we are just simply um writing a love letter to them we have taken all of their delicious tasting notes a little bit more all of these delicious tasting notes and we are crafting them into something without alcohol uh, the name liars for uh, instance isn't because we're lying it's named after the liar bird uh, liars is an australian company and the liar bird is uh, native to Australia and it's um, it's fantastic. I really recommend anybody out there to go and check out David Attenborough's uh, video of him looking at the liar bird. It blew me away. So he does car alarms, he does baby crying and even um, camera shutters and um, uh, chainsaws at the end. Um, and absolutely fantastic, really uncanny. And that's exactly what we are doing we are taking all of these beautiful spirits that we know and love and um mimicking them to the highest possible standards um and i think this is where or this really is shown uh, especially well through um this drink through the american vault um with how well it fits in with that bourbon flavors the 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 woody uh, aged oak um the amazing vanillins and then of course kind of kind of almost uh, dark Demerara sugar flavors coming through as well. So uh, I know I've had a little ramble about how much I love uh, this spirit, um, but here we have our um, our final drink is Boulevardio, um, equal parts, just stirred it down, um, block of ice, and then I've just done a little twist over the top of orange to get those notes. Cheers. Awesome. So we've got a question uh, and it says about, uh, if you're going to build an alcohol-free bar, what would you say are your must-haves? So Obviously, you know the range very, very well. What would your must have to be um, if you were building an alcohol-free bar? Ah, really, really good shout. Um, I like to get, um, we know we talked about people pleasers, but also about being able to offer as many different drinks as possible. So um, I feel, feel you'd want to go for something light, like our Dry London, to get something ginny going on, or perhaps our light cane spirit which is kind of like a light rum equivalent that works exceedingly well in espresso martinis because that is one of my favorite drinks everybody loves mm -hmm. a good espresso martini but of course you have all of those um longer drinks that you can pop it in like a collins um uh, a mojito a daiquiri yeah. and then and then we want to go for something um bitter so we have um campari equivalent just because it has that uh, mature flavor to it that um, kind of really just like brings drinks to another level. Um, darker spirits and then finally our um, sweet vermouth, just because uh, I'm obsessed with that kind of uh, Negroni Bouvardier twists that you can do and you can pop in a base spirit plus sweet vermouth plus Campari and you're gonna have an excellent drink. And that's just a three ingredient drink right there. Easy man, easy. Um, I would say, uh, if you're opening on up bar as well, um, the range you can actually get across the board. This is moving slightly away from lies, um, but my experience is uh, these things like your non-alc beer range. I'm trying to find a non-alc beer on draft, and I found one so far, and I've been looking really? for six weeks. Yeah, the bar in um, bar in Leeds. So check out um, Drop Dead Brewing Company and Nirvana Brewing as well. Uh, they specialise in doing um, no ABV beers, and instead of it being traditional beer that's had the alcohol taken out of it they, they specialize in just doing that um i think it's a great usp so actually we are looking at um working with uh, we are the feel good club so they're opening a well a cafe. Name. yes they're absolutely incredible follow them follow them on instagram and um, the daily advice is, is absolutely inspiring um but we're going to be do um working on a wellness cafe lucky saying is a, is a very very good one as well daniel thank you um but one thing that i've said to them is they should look at putting a um, a non-alc on draft because i think it's you know probably be one of the only places in manchester to um do it as well um so yeah think about your whole range and it is possible to get very very good um alcohol free options on pretty much everything well, I'm upset, and I know um, that Big Drop work really well, work a lot with Club Soda. They are fantastic um, as well because they don't just do your traditional lagers. They also do a fantastic stout, which I can't praise highly enough. And, of course, BrewDog have got their uh, completely alcohol-free bar. Um, I don't know if they have sprung up outside of London just yet, but we have one over in Old Street. Um, 
So I'm very happy anyway. I have a very good time there. Um, I was I was uh, going to ask about how you're finding it now that lockdown has eased up, Aaron. I mean, like we, you ch you chatted about finding a few um, alcohol free beers and such. Um, have you found it's been I don't know easy to transition? Um, yeah, pretty much. But that's because I. have um, worked my way into a position that I've made it easy. So, for example, today um, I was having a little bit of wobble earlier, and I actually said to a friend of mine that we were meant to meet up. I said, to be honest with you, I don't want to go out today um, because if I go to a bar, it'd be far too easy for me to just order out and drink. Let me sleep on it. Let me just chill. Obviously, I'm not with you anyway. Um, and I'll meet you tomorrow when I'm in a in a better headspace. So, obviously, you do run the risk, especially going into bars, which we all love and making it very, very easy um, for alcohol to appear in front of you, especially when you know the bartenders and especially when um, you've worked very, very closely with the industry. So um, I found it pretty easy. Um, I never thought I'd say that I am getting a little bit sick of earning a non-alcoholic, even though it's amazing. I, uh, I think it's I refreshing. Seven. Yeah, it's amazing, but I had seven in one day because it was the only non-alcoholic option in pretty much every bar that I went to. Okay. So. Yeah, what it, what it was good is it was a little bit much, but do you know what I mean, if that's if that's my only complaint, then um, I think I'm doing pretty uh, pretty well. And one thing that we're keen to push in the future is um, organising activities that don't necessarily revolve around alcohol. So there's a great concept uh, in America um, about earning your boot, and you go throughout the day and you do um, various activities, whether it be sporting activities, go karting, actor, and whatever it might be. Um, and then you don't actually drink any alcohol until the end of the day. And I think one of the key things is that making sure that it's um, available for people. So basically saying to people in whatever bar groups around the UK, um, just so you know, guys, we are going to do this today. It's free for you to join yoga mm -hmm. in the park, running club, whatever it might be. Um, and it gives people the option then to, um, to engage in activities that don't necessarily revolve around alcohol. Um, and I think we've all been there where you wake up on a um, on your day off and it's midday and you go, oh, let's just go for like Sunday fun day. And then you realise that by about three o'clock in the afternoon, you're not in a very good way um, and you're going to have a pretty terrible week as a result of this. 100%. Um, I, I know we've chatted about this before as well. We've You've gotten into yoga quite a bit as well. Do you think that comes hand in hand that you have to you have to go for yoga if you're going to be mindfully drinking or is it just uh, something that creeps up on you? It, it's... Um, not coincidental, it's not saying you have to get into yoga, um, but I cannot recommend it highly enough. So I was so dubious to start with. Um, I, I was like, well, like breathing and stuff. Like, nah, I'm really good at that already, mate. Like, I'm still here, aren't I? So, uh, and again, I accidentally ended up doing it because we did the, um, the lives with So Let's Talk for Mental Health Awareness Week, and I was about to train at home. And a little thing popped up saying, so Let's Talk is going live. And it was actually a yoga session. I was like, well, I'm already you know, in my workout here. Um, let's just see what happens. And I was dubious to start with. And about five minutes in, you get an understanding of how your body works, um, your breathing and your balance uh, and everything that sort of um, makes you tick. And it's been amazing. I do, uh, I do yoga every day now. And I'm not saying that I can like, tie myself in knots and have uh, this sort of like, RC, yeah, no, yeah, that's, that's the aim. Um, but this sort of like nirvana is like tranquilness. But am I saying that I am in a much better mood a lot of the time? Um, my flexibility is increased. Um, just things like I can sit on a on a train without getting a chronic headache um, from one not being hungover, but two also being like a more more supple and also being um, a little bit more flexible. So yeah, I'm not saying that I'm going to be the best in the world at it and you know, I won't be able to tie myself in knots but it's something that I'm definitely keen to, uh, to push forward so always good to hear um yeah. well we are nearly up on time um, I'd like to just remind everybody that there are so many other fantastic things um going on with the Mind of Food Drinking Festival there is a session at five so just on after us if you'd like to hang around and I really suggest you do they've got some fantastic panelists talking about fantastic uh alcohol free no and low um products um and I also want to really want to thank you. Um, thank you, Aaron, so much for coming and chatting to me uh, and chatting about your own kind of journey. Um, but also thank you, everybody, for watching, for commenting, um, for asking questions, um, and for listening to what uh, make some fantastic uh, alcohol-free liars spirit cocktails at home. Sounds. Thank you very much for having us. It's been great. Thank you, guys. Have a good day.